Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel. I'm Ella and in this tutorial we are going to work on three different materials for this room and see how we can complete it. As you can see we have a simple room with a bed and bedside and bunch of windows all around the room to have enough lighting. Before we start, I want to say that we're going to work with the latest version of Inkscape, which is 3.5 and I have also created another tutorial for two different materials in this version of Inkscape and you can find it in top right corner. To start, let's download our materials. Go to Ambient CG and All Categories. We're going to use two different materials for our walls. One of them is break. In here you can see different types of materials. I think this could be suitable for our room. And also you can use this one, this one, maybe this one. If you want your break to be a bit darker, you can use this. Maybe this if you want it to be kind of colorful. If you want to have a really old break, you can use this. You can see that I'm choosing red breaks because I want to make that wall old but you can use any types of breaks that you want. Let's download this one and also this one. We have two different formats and I usually download this one to KGPG because it has good enough quality. It's break number 5 and this one is break number 77. Now for the other wall, we are going to use a neutral color. I like it to be kind of white, so you can either use this material here. But if you want to really build your other wall, this red brick wall, you can use plaster. Go to all categories and scroll down a little bit in here you can find plaster and you can download one of them let's download this one it's plaster number two now for our floor you can either use marble or maybe tiles if you want but i'm going to use wood floor something like this or this one this is wood number 39 and wood floor 36. As you know, brick is very strong texture and it could change our atmosphere. So let's start with that. We are going to use it for this wall. So first select that wall and go to edit type, duplicate it, change its name. Now this is our brick and if you want to change its material, you need to click in this part, create new material for it, change its name. First, we are going to add our color texture. Click here and find your material. If you extract your files, you will have images like this. For image, we are going to use this one. Select it. And first, let's see how it will look like. Apply. Okay. It's too small. Now that we have created new material for this wall, you don't need to select it and go to edit type and then this part and from here change it. Instead, go to manage and setting, select this material here and edit your material from here. Click on this part and as you can see, the first thing we need to change is its size. You need to change it according to the dimensions of your image. So right click on your image and from properties go to details and in here you can see its dimension. It's exactly 1 to 2 so whatever number that we are going to use for its width we need to use the half of it for its height. Let's go with 2 and open this lock and use 1 for its height. Okay it is much better now. If you want to have real brick size, you just need to create a rectangle on your wall with the exact number of bricks that you want. Then you are going to match your texture with that rectangle. Now let's add bump. Active bump and in here you can either use displacement or one of these normal bumps. And in this part we need to enter the exact number that we used for color. Let's use 200, okay, 
You might don't see its differences from this view, but if you look at from other angle, other perspective, you can see them. Let's change it a little bit. You can see these shadows here. I think it looks good. Let's go back to our view. For now, our break looks good, but another thing that we can add is reflectivity. We know that we don't have that much reflect on breaks and we don't really understand it, but I think it would be so good if you add them. So in reflectivity, click on this one and go to image. We are going to use roughness for our reflect. Click and change its size. As I said, we can't see that much difference, but it's good to have it. For this wall, we are going to use plaster. First, go to edit type and edit and change its material. Create new one, change its name. Okay, click on image and find your material, which is plaster number two. In here, we have also a color displacement and uh, to normal and roughness select color okay and let's check its dimensions go to plaster right click go to properties and details and we have a square let's go here and probably we need to change this let's use one This is our texture. Let's edit it from this perspective. Go to manage and material in plaster wall. First, let's add bump with displacement. We are going to use displacement for it. Click on your texture and change its size to one exactly. Okay. We don't need to use that much bump for plaster. And I think this could be good now active reflect and go to image let's use roughness change its number okay we can't see anything from this view but plaster is a material that we actually can see its reflect so let's change its glossiness if you want to see a bit more reflect okay and we're going to change it if it's too much or if you want to add more reflect it looks better now you can see this light here this is because we increase our glossiness and it is too much let's go back to 60. you can use this material for our selling as well so select your sailing go to edit type and edit go find your plaster wall and okay last thing about our texture is its color you see it's a bit dark you can leave it like this or you can change its color at the end with post-production the other thing that you can do is to change your textures color in photoshop import your picture to photoshop unlock it while you are selecting your layer press ctrl shift and a together First, change its temperature and then its exposure. May increase its contrast, see its highlight, shadows, shadow looks good, increase its whiteness, decrease its texture, and also decrease its saturation. I think it looks better. Let's test it. Save it. Go to material and change its color click on its source and select the picture that we edit you don't need to change its size we just changed its image okay it look much better we don't have those textures in our sailing and these parts and also its color looks better you see when it comes to rendering there is no secret you just need to take your time and work on your material on your lighting and your settings as much as possible if you look at this part you can see their materials are different partly it's because of light and also you can change its wrapping so select your wall go to edit type and put your wrapping in interior or both of these okay now it looks better now let's work on the floor 
select your floor go to edit type and edit in this part change its material create new material change its name first let's add its color texture click on image and find your material either one of these this one make it a bit bigger and select your color texture let's check its dimension first and it's one by one and okay let's first test it apply and okay it's really a small for a parquet go to manage and material change its size to let's go with two okay apply okay let's see how it looks like and now it's too big 1.5 could be good yes it looks good active bump and click on its image select displacement and change its size let's first apply to see how it looks like okay this is enough you can see we have no shadows in these parts go to reflectivity and add roughness change its size to 1.5 parquet is something that needs a lot of glossiness and reflect so it's okay if you want to increase this let's see how it looks like you can see this reflect here it's for our wall and it will increase if you get closer to the floor Our room looks complete, but you can always change and add details. This will make your render real and better. More you work on your render, you will make it much more realistic. For example, if you don't like the color of your floor, you can change it the way we changed our plaster. And you can do the same for your brick. We saw that there are so many textures that we can use for different parts. And if you don't like this combination, you can always change them. You can use marble or stone or even concrete for your floor. You can use wallpaper or another type of brick for these walls. And you can also add other objects. These are inkscape objects and you can find so many other objects that you can use. For example, you can add sailing lamp to this part. You can add plants. You can add sweeps to these parts. You can change your sailing and add like halogens. And also you can work on exterior. After all, the most important part is your lighting. As you see, if you change the location of your sun, you will have different shadows in different parts of your rooms. You just need to work on your render and all of these parts together so you have the best render. When you're satisfied with your render, you can press Shift and F11 on your keyboard to export your image. And then you can start post-production. Import your render to Photoshop and select its layer. Press Ctrl, Shift and A and in here you can change its temperature and you can add it exposure. Then you can change its contrast and just play with all of these options and see what feeling you want to add to your render. You want it to be in the morning and bright or you want the sunset feeling. You can edit your render as much as you want with all of these options. You, you can work on its saturation, its color balance. I suggest to play with lookups, it will help a lot. So yes, that's it. I hope it was useful for you and you enjoyed watching this tutorial. See you soon.